Es que ahí tienen los pelos, ¿no? Mejora yeah, la cara. I want you to face up. You. Okay. Okay, we're recording. I'm going to roll this camera to you just for a backup for the first hour. Thank you. So no stage directions. Uh, Joe, ¿qué es lo que se ve, Bebo? You. No, yeah. but I mean just right like here, this. From here. Okay. What do you see? Carmen wants to know. Oh, no, just okay. like so, this. Yeah, exactly. Great. Yeah, so don't hide. Should I read the stage so, Someone is gonna, yeah, I don't know, say a lucid dream, something. Okay. Okay. Right? Yeah. Lucid dream by Begonia Plaza. You do that and I'll do the stage directions for just the beginning. A lucid, a lucid dream by Begonia Plaza. Right? Mm -hmm. He's going to okay. say as one? Yeah, you tell us when we start. I'm recording. Sorry, oh. Recording. oh, okay. That is funny. A Lucid Dream by Begonia Plaza. On each side of the stage is a window facing the audience. Each window is covered by a gauze, one looking out to a sunlit sky and the other to cold darkness. An expensive suitcase sits center stage where Evita is crouched on the floor, frantically searching in the ground. She wears a mink coat, stylish high heel shoes, hair up in a rumpled bun, and makeup a bit smeared. Evita bumps into the old lonely tree trunk. Father, is this you? Papi, Papito, Daddy. Dad, papi, padre, papá. This word stirs in me. I don't know. Completeness? All my life I hated you. Missing makes me for hating. Missing makes for hating. You made me want something that was mine, but that I couldn't have. What disconnectedness. Now you're here, as if a million years had dissolved, standing out and far out at this fork on the road. Tall, distinguished, and strangely solid. The wind sweeps away your leaves along with my maddening peef. Breaking into the clouds beyond the storms of ill weather. While hunting for my last diamond, I find you. What could be better? Someone's intruding. Before she finds it, I will. The running creek. Those are sounds of sweet tasting water near. I'm on track. Oh, excuse me. I didn't see you here. Distracted by the sounds, the smells, the colors, God's sheer glittering glow of brilliance stupefies me. Except for this market weather. Are you in line? Me? You'll never see me in a line. I just don't want to get ahead of anyone. I was here first, if that's what you mean. Right. So I'm after you then. Are you waiting for the train? There's a train? Maybe it's to cross us over the river. I assume. Just goes to show how much more I need to know. The clinging to seductions even here is a cause for tripping. I'm heading in that direction down to the border section where I'm originally from and I always go back with good intention. You must be cold. I am not cold. <laughs> how long have you been here? 
not long at all. As a matter of fact, I just got here. What were you doing on the ground? Uh, I lost an earring that needs to be found. Are you sure it was here? Yes. A diamond stud given to me by my loving Juan. He says that diamonds are of unconquerable beauty and imperishable brilliance. Like me, he says. Uh. Notice the sharp flawless edges on this one? It's best I find the other. Hmm. Watch where you step. Put your hands or lay down. Snakes might be around. Did you say snakes? Well, where, wherever you hear the sound of a running creek, nearby is the raspy clatter of a rattlesnake's tail in concert. I have to find my expensive stud, but if not, uh, I'll figure something out. I'm sure I'll be able to figure something out. If not, I guess I'll tell him um, a white lie. Oh, is that the game you play? So he doesn't get angry at me. Nothing wrong with keeping the peace. The only diamonds you will see here are those sparkling in the sky where the angels fly. Those messengers who give their life for humanity, sacredly obliged to participate in a war against tyranny. I'll say a thief got away with one start. But I didn't let him get away with both. Then he'll be proud of me and I won't feel so guilty. Here you'll never find guilt, nor the other earring. That precious jewel is in the hands of a Jewish man who claimed they were originally his wife's. I have no clue what you're talking about. The enemy is vile and treacherous. Our men drown their tears and tighten their fists, knowing that the fight was to the death. From the depths of every heart, a promise of vengeance was elevated, swearing to justice and to, the, to honor our dead. I am only a simple woman who lives to serve Juan and my people. Ah, you're Evita Perón, right? That's right. <laughs> First Lady of Argentina, a self-made woman devoted to serving her people her husband and her country. And you? Who are you? Oh, nice earrings. <laughs> I'm like that butterfly who is finally free from its earthly cocoon, exquisitely emerging from a caterpillar state of long metamorphic struggles through a chrysalis of painful grace. <clears throat> Uh, look, here. This is Time Magazine, and on the cover is me, Evita, on the cover of Time Magazine. I made this happen. Um, they could have used a real photograph instead of this, this caricature interpretation. Only goes to show how afraid they are of my reality. Do you know those gringos up north? How condescending they can be when obliged to celebrate and outside their own? As with Pancho Villa, they tried making a parody of me. Pancho's motto has been also mine. Alcohol kills the poor, and education saves them. Education gave me the courage, intelligence, and power. No greater strength than to articulate convincingly. Mm. The power of the spoken word. Uh, I wanted to lend you a coat, um, but uh, I guess my husband must have taken them out from here. At home, I have fox fur, <laughs> reindeer skin, leopard fur, even Russian sable, and a chinchilla which is my all-time favorite. Can you believe that a rodent of the South American Andes is the rarest, softest, and silkiest of all the forests? The chinchilla is the only rat on Earth to be near extinction. <laughs> How funny is that? This one that I'm wearing, 
is mink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> really, thank you. <sighs> By the way, this here is your home now. I hate the cold. <sighs> My voice suffers and I, I cannot afford that. My people love to hear me speak. Do you see the descamisados? The shirtless people are always ready for something, anything, everything from me. Evita Perón. Is that the entrance? Is that the way to the entrance? The only way is the first class way. Ah, I'm not that special. Stick with me, kid. No, I'm happy to. Why no? And not then? Here, now, one puts aside earthly differences. How different could we really be? Complete opposites, actually. I'm Saint Vita of Argentina. I know. I wear it with pride. Too much pride turns into self-centeredness, arrogance, conceit, egotism, vainglory, vanity, self-obsession, superiority, and self-defeat. I'm done with those forces of nature, the suffering, pomp, and circumstance. I'm making this my home. Without order, time, nor form, just intense brilliance. Chocolate? No, thank you. You sure? It's finger licking good. No. Traveling can be so lonely. Glad I find conversationists like you is by my side. Juan was worried for my journey and repeated to me, stay mysterious and plagiarize. That makes for a lot to hide. Just for those of simple mind. Do you remember the journey getting here? Uh, it's all a blur. Disconcerting and a bit scary, I have to say. I got lost along the way. Well, still you made it without having gone astray. So many things have vanished in the hay. It's just the mind that wants to let go. Didn't you see the spectrum of colors merging? The blinding white light getting bigger absorbing you deep into a black passageway the size of a pinhole where you began feeling lighter and lighter, freer and freer, lesser and lesser, fuller and fuller until this moment of nothingness. Say your name again. Oh, that's right. I am Dolores. Dolores Ibarruri. <laughs> that name sounds familiar. Pardon my memory. I, I meet so many people every day. Am I supposed to recognize you? That's okay. Everything with you seems okay. That tree reminds me of me. For me, it's a reminder of those who sneer, the rich and title hypocrites. Help me forget their envy, ill will and regret. You know how when you awake and you think you can't remember, but then Focus, 
leads your thoughts to that place where guidance is in charge? My sweetest vengeance would be to see their feeble minds wrapped around their buffalo brains with the shock of my distinction while their assets ring to their pedestrian size. You're remembering a dream mostly filled with lies. We're not of Earth anymore. The drama is over, for sure. <laughs> oh. Here, have a snack. I'm intoxicated as it is. There has to be more sustenance than this. My last piece of chocolate. Mm. My last go to pleasure. Always hard to imagine what's coming next. One July morning in 1952, I was sweeping my kitchen floor while listening to my Spanish program on Moscow radio. The shocking news was announced. Evita Perón had died. I was stunned and I thought, why? How could that be? So young and vital, barely 33. The radio announcer alluded to some conspiracy describing Argentina's disconcerting ache of a nation's millions lost and bereft, keeping wake. Look at me. Go ahead. Touch me. Go ahead. Can you see that I'm alive? Impatient and hungry as can be. Did you know of your malady? I say, we limit this conversation of stories of exaltation. To be forgotten is no crime. I want Mrs. Peron to get it right this time. Please call me Evita, if you don't mind. We accomplished became famous, and then we died. For my people, I'm always alive. I'll be addressed as simply, Evita. Evita, all right. Truth be told, I too pre presented the people with a nom de guerre. Truth be told, I had the city of Buenos Aires bathed with my portrait in a large slug in the red. Um, how did it go? So you forced the name Evita on them? Oh, yes. I prefer to be simply Evita and not the wife of the president. Then it went. If Evita is to be used for bettering the conditions of my people in their homes. Very clever, Evita. Calculatingly so. I'm sensing... We share that same unquenchable drive for ambition and a willpower to flourish. What I did was uh, out of necessity. Pure instinct from a deep personal, impoverished existence. Courage came from wanting to give others hope, spreading a vision of solidarity and obliged to improve the lives of workers. So I took action. Me too. <laughs> I mean, it was me, it was my husband too who motivated my activism. Juan always explains how when he was imprisoned by the military, it was I who rallied the people to demand his freedom. And it was I who never gave up until he was set free. When the people began to count and the military started losing its power, that's when we became Mr. and Mrs. Perón, and all because of me. Those who seek power always get corrupted. But if the people are united, they'll never be defeated. 
the vicious cycle continues until someone gets a top to then take advantage drop by drop. That's my father. He did that with my mother, my siblings, and me. But at the end, I shot him all right. Just like everybody who dismisses or denigrates me, I put up a fight. What did you do to show him? Why, that revenge is sweet. How? By taking from the rich and giving to the poor. I read somewhere how the rich popped open bottles of champagne, cheering, long live cancer, our hate was not in vain, while your corpse was still being drained. <laughs> Champagne! Mmm, so good! With a frizzed grill asador stick from Las Pampas, with a little champagne. <laughs> Argentina, you water in my mouth. <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. I'm not interested in the end. There is no end. Eternity turns and turns. Did they really say those awful things about me? And cheer, too? Better to die on one's feet than to live on one's knees. <sighs> now I know who you are. Like you, a soul in transition, turning my eyes to other planes. No. You are passionaria. That atheist red, that communist figurehead. That once resolute anti-fascist, with the battle cry for a unified republic in Spain, free, democratic, and just. I am the salt of the Iberian earth, with a fierce voice of courage, mother of solidarity, symbol of heroism. Like me, you are the greatest female orator of our time. The voiceless spoke united through my rhyme. I was once in Spain, but you no longer were there. That's right. A fascist dictator overthrew our Republican government. So I exiled to Russia. Fortunately, 35 years later, he died and I returned. It was... Um... 1947. Crowds welcome me at the airport in Madrid. People shower me with flowers and messages of goodwill. And from out of that crowd, a little boy ran to me. I opened my arms to him, you know, as a symbolic gesture. Argentina embracing all of Spain. The young boy handed me a rose with, along with a note, handwritten by him. Yeah, begging me to save his mother's life. It read, they already killed my father. Now they plan to kill my mother. Only you can stop them, Evita. Please help. His mother's name was Juana Doña. She was captive in a prison cell while her children were left motherless. Juana, that's right. My mother's name too. Truth be told, that, that name was what gave me the impulse. Juana embodied my vulnerable mother. Imagine if everyone personified our mother, our sister, our brother. How much better that world would be since we're all vulnerable like she. It felt good to influence Spain's head of state. My courageous request rang loud before that fair dictator. He complied. I think as a sign of gratitude for my visit to his shunned country, I could tell 
He resented my force of hand. You drew out a strain of compassion from Franco, who was unacquainted with that contrived act. That was a momentous and unprecedented act. For that act, Argentina was awarded much grandeur. The poor served you well, Evita. Your shirtless ones. Yes. I developed a reciprocal relationship with the poor that still gives me all the more reason to live. In that earthly world, all effort goes to being acknowledged. Half my life was spent portraying Dolores. Then I suddenly became La Passionaria. Toward the end, I understood. It's all one karma, but none fully me. Evita is me, all right. I remember to clearly the climb up the mountain top. I never give that up. Not even to merge with the divine? You're an atheist. How do you speak of such signs? I told you, it's the clinging and defending our battles that bring us down to size. Life is conflicting and a constant paradox. Not to stand in the midst would be a dishonor. Precisely in the midst is where balance is found. No. It's in the extremes where heroes and saints abound. Oh, that's right. You're one of those. My people endorsed me. Safeguarding Nazi war criminals is sainthood to you? Oh, that? That was simply a coordinated effort with the very pop himself and Franco, who single-handedly secured their transfer. To fruitful, safe Argentinian ground. Politics is a complicated matter, P. I know that, Eve. Evita, please. I was acting on my chief's behalf. Come on, Evita. You won't take responsibility for sticking to your husband's bleak path. It's not quite that unrestrained. But just enough. A political leader of my stature cannot allow emotions to dominate. Argentina has a common economic self-interest when committed to welcoming anyone with a mind for medicine, science, math, and finance. And of course, Jews are always appreciated. How inclusive. They're not discriminated. Anyone who contributes productively is welcomed. But we just don't like bombs. Oh, but righteous murderers are accepted by this Catholic saint. This Catholic saint was authenticated by her people. Millions of people died in those criminal hands. <sighs> Am I here to be judge? We're simply reawakening. Then try to understand how the charge can be stuck between a rock and a hard place. A small village in Holland named Newland and another in the south of France named Le Chambon Soulignon, unaware of each other, agreed to rescue and hide one Jewish family per home. They were propelled by empathy from a memory of their own when suffering the Christians' barbaric attack centuries ago during the Crusades. What a streak of providence to meet you here and now. None is by chance. Quite an upfront heart to heart this has become. We've entered the truth zone, <laughs> where love is one. I'm, I'm not sure I understand, but you look ravishing. I'm blushing. Truth be told, you kind of frighten me. Why? Because I love life. Where everyone goes through the motions, 
checking off lists as if on death row? Here, we can awaken to the illusion that fear is fake, that war, violence, misery, the famine, the hate. Evita, I too have been afraid. The train is coming. That's all we need to know. You're getting ahead of yourself. Leave it to me. I always get things done. Otherwise, we might as well play a game. I agree. We're not here just to pass the time and away. <sighs> Maybe we are. Tell me more about me and the grand finale at the end of my life. <sighs> well. Supposedly, your vigil and state funeral was so big and crowded that seven people died crushed. Really? What diversions? Everyone wanting to touch Evita's eternally embalmed body. Everyone? <laughs> so I am preserved for eternity. Nothing is eternal. Not down there. Nothing is sacred. They massacred your corpse, your insides, your nose and scalp. My scalp? Where? Near the forehead. Do you remember having a large scar there? Ceiling, cold, frigid voices surrounding me, hands placed everywhere over my body, unfamiliar gray hurt face looking down at me, slight smirk, a black thick leather belt tied over my head, my forehead. An earthquake inside my brain. Every bone in my body rattling. Explosions of ice behind my temples. Crack, crack, crack. <gasps> the leaking burning acid. Swallowing lead. These in dull, glare, muted, blinded, <laughs> blackout. <laughs> Are you saying? What was that, Evita? My friend was raped. Now I remember. I was desecrated. Why did you make me remember? <laughs> to awake. It was a lobotomy, what I was given. One, hold my hand and would say, you never feel pain again, my girl. <laughs> my girl will never again be in pain. You'll see, Evita, how the pain will have gone away. Except for that thing. That always remains. Our essence, our conscience, our truth, our love, that never dies. I feel puckered, invaded, plagued, undone. You can dress yourself up again and again. Let that old carcass recycle. Let the peel of a, like a Putrid fruit reinvent in new soil. <laughs> Why are you here? I was fine before you came.
one can't be lifted without the other. During the last years of my long, turbulent life, a Catholic priest came along to my side to guide me on the path toward reparation and departure. I pushed him away again and again until he made me see how intertwined our karma is with the other. So you became religious? Not at all. I only became me and nothing to do with isms any longer. Fascism, communism, Catholicism, Peronism. I lost my faith one day at my father's funeral. Walking towards his coffin down the aisle, holding my little brother's hand, when a priest interceded just as we were almost there. Quietly but firmly, he took our hands and escorted us out the church. This holy man explained that the family could not accept our presence amongst them. I replied, but that's my puppy. He pretended not to hear my plea, swiftly handing me over to my mother waiting outside. The abandonment and illegitimacy didn't impact me so much as that moment of public indignity. I swear to take control of my life from that moment on without apology. Humiliation is that potent weapon of manipulation. You don't remember moments like that? They're all in the distant past. I was home in the kitchen. My husband in jail. And my baby Reuben in my arms. I was preparing my usual bread and garlic soup. I heard a knock at the door. And not having noticed the big expensive car parked out front, I thought that it had to be the police as usual. I opened the door. And to my great shock, there standing before me was Doña Sebastiana Ugarte. She was the wife of one of the richest mine owners in Vizcaya. Doña Ugarte's daughter had been my dearest friend in primary school until she was sent off to boarding school in France. Doña Ugarte never looked at me. I remember that. I was the daughter of a miner, a simple village girl who meant nothing to this rich wife. But now, this village girl had transformed into a voice of dissent that was resonating throughout Spain. I now was engaged in the struggle as a communist denouncing the shameful exploitation of the miners. Doña Ugarte was suddenly overcome with fright. Now she didn't mind lowering herself and coming to my squalid room on a second floor walk up, rattling her purse in the face of our misery. Hello? What can I do for you? Please, come in. This way. Sit down if you'd like. What a surprise, Doña Ugarte. We drove over to Somarrostro to visit some friends and took advantage of the opportunity to say hello to you, to see how you live, and find out if we can be of any assistance. No reason to be surprised, Dolores. Assistance? To me? Well, this is my home. As you can see, not a pretty picture, but unfortunately not a unique picture either. 
Many others live just like I do. Please, notice. This is our life. Three months ago, my little girl Esther died. I had to borrow money for the coffin. And before that, I borrowed money for her medications and food. Life is a veil of tears. There is no absolute happiness in this world, Dolores. Indeed. But this veil of tears is of absolute misery yeah. for us, the workers who possess nothing but our strength and hands so that others can exploit us to make of their life a paradise of absolute prosperity. I am not resigned to living in this veil of tears forever. I am engaged in the struggle for a better life for all. And we refuse to leave anyone behind. Sure, sure, sure. That's all fine. But until a better life for all becomes possible, wouldn't you like to have a comfortable house? Huh? A piece of land? A good job for your husband? And above all, healthy and alive children. Hmm? Huh? I don't waste my time with such fantasies. Dolores, listen to me. I could happily transform that unlikely fantasy into a reality for you. In exchange for what, Doña Sebastiana? A person like you would not make such an offer unless there were very unappealing conditions attached. In exchange for what? In exchange for your own salvation, child of God? There is nothing greater than to be on course to heaven above. Abandon that unworthy path you have chosen and return to your religion. I am offering to make you as content as anyone can be in this alien world. You offend me with your unscrupulous proposition. Go play fake missionary to the house next door, where two families with seven children barely survive the struggle through malnutrition. Offer them what you have offered me, and I promise you, they will be forever grateful. Dolores, <laughs> please understand that I want to help you because I know you. And remember how you and my daughter were friends? Since young, I know your family so well. Of course you do. But my father, all my brothers, my husband, and every man in my family has slaved for your husband. I don't know what life holds for me, but I choose to struggle on the road of education towards self-empowerment, equality, and democracy. That is my only course of hope. How easily you've been poisoned and are reading the wrong books. I promise that I shall pray for your recovery, Dolores, because you, you are going to need it. She rushed out my door as I yelled back. Do as you like, but you can't buy me off. Painful moments away, cunning mistrust. Moments that force us to really feel the pain. How many children did you lose? Early on, I lost four out of six. Some of the nuns were good to me and tried all they could to save my babies 
from the grip of tuberculosis and hunger. Later, during the war, I secured their safety and brought to their hideout a beautiful painting of the Virgin Mother to protect them. Their humanness was soothing. Did you have a chance to become a mother? No. I mean, yes. I, uh, like my father, turn away from my own flesh and blood. I give birth to a girl whose father was already married to another woman, knowing that I wouldn't survive my new predicament. I accepted his wife's proposition because she couldn't have children of her own. She willingly accepted my baby as hers under one condition, that I disappear completely. I don't know how I did that. I don't know, but I did. Now I must go and see her. She needs to know that I, Evita Peron, am her mother. I have to go. The truth is uncovered, one way or another. You can understand why, how I couldn't. The curse, the terrible curse of having free choice and not seeing that all is programmed already. For me, the there was no other way. I, I wasn't capable that they were. They had everything, stability, money, and a home. <sighs> you said, uh, you said you died old. Why don't you look it? I don't. <laughs> no. Maybe I prefer looking how I remember myself most. How I rather think of me and, and the time I felt a bit joyous and with doting ecstasy. And how I hope he remembers me. He? Who is he? A man. A man? But not your husband? No. You loved him very much? Who knows what that was? <sighs> Without love, there is nothing. True. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Quite the whore. <laughs> For the gain was mostly pain. Everyone knew? They thought they knew what this unadorned, non-forgiving, sober, fierce freedom fighter could and could not do. It's easy to speculate, presume, and judge. You know? How old were you? Well, Francisco was barely 24, I was 42. Oh. <laughs> How defiant. And here I thought you were so chaste. Any spirited woman should lose her head and heart for one man's lust. Without constraint. If you can't help it and must. Then secrets should stay undisclosed and privately concealed. Here, no secret is left unanalyzed. Is that how it goes? I was ready when Earth bid me farewell. And willingly I said, adios. 
You, on the other hand, Evita, were not prepared to go. You didn't have the time to comprehend the sobering laws of nature. The world still treats you as if you were alive. Don't let their pull keep you to one side. But we are not done with each other. Surprising realms unknown lead us to our father. If, if only we release ourselves of desire. I hate my father. My greatest wish is for him to know that a man like Juan needs me and a whole country without me is in trouble. I need to go, if only for my baby. You think it all stops without you? People continue making mistakes by forgetting what's true. You said they remember me though. That's the ego clinging and desires ringing at the door. What makes you think you know so much? All my life I've been memorable and distinct, touching people's hearts while becoming wealthy and never allowing a sleight of hand. You are tenacious, I give you that. Ambitious and crafty, but in the end, if hooked, we won't stand a chance. I've entertained enough of your thoughts. Uh, but now I have all the more important ones of my own, if you don't mind, that I, I want to contemplate. As I stand here and wait to get home, I'm tired and confused. I miss my Juan, my work, my fun, and, and every weary days that I always ended in my knowing. I, I was a person of note and essential to the progress of my world. Why? feel like a void and it's just so unreal. I wonder what God would say. God, long ago he turned away. She takes everything into account. God is female. God is divine. Oh, then, of course, we'll be fine. She, the divine, must have had a hand in the many good things I did for my people in their land. To just name a few and, and give you a clue, equal opportunity for all. Right to vote for women, free health care and education, but above all, aspiration. Like a caring mother. You did all those things. Indeed. So God's gender is female? Sometimes she's dressed in drag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, just, just for fun, what if we go over our lives together, review and prepare, you know what I mean? Be ready to present a, a convincing argument for mistakes committed and give prominence to unselfish acts. All right, I'm game. You start. No, you start. From the top, take me back to your earliest of times. I don't know about that. I've said enough. My life is boring. Yours is fun. Come on, Passionaria. You don't think I'm dumb. All right then. <laughs> I was born in the north of Spain, in the mining town of Gallarta, Vizcaya's Basque province. I come from a family of miners, a place of permanent struggle where everyone felt the bitter misery. My childhood impressions are of my father, always working what we called from star to star, from before sunrise until after sunset. Mm -hmm. Every night the poor man would come home half dead, and my precious mother, after preparing, serving, cleaning, and seeing everyone to bed, would sit on a kitchen chair and cry. 
Seeing her cry is what pained my childhood most. You had a father and mother, and together you were part of something? Oh, sure. The suffering was shared <laughs> amongst family and the mining ghetto. We lived so close to the mines that when the alarm went off, in seconds everyone ran to cover, avoiding the rocks shooting out at us in an explosion from the mountain's heart. In the building where my family lived was the worker center. There, workers gathered to soak their spirits with ideas of justice and redemption. That was also the children's favorite gathering spot. <laughs> the walls were covered with powerful flags representing the street cleaners, the trash pickers, the miners, the fishermen, the socialist party, the youth party. And every year we celebrated anniversaries like the Commune of Paris of 1871. Hmm a revolutionary siege where, where French workers retaliated fruitlessly against exploitation, or the Haymarket Riot of Chicago in 1886. We'd manifest on the streets with a festive parade, a marching band, allegorical cards, and the crowds would end the day singing songs of promise to always oppose abuse and follow the revolutionary footsteps of workers everywhere. That was my childhood playground and the environment in which I grew up. No wonder. My father was a Carlist. Conservative. I was barely age 10 when he'd send me to political reunions to listen in his place. I learned about discipline, aggression. One time, the miners went on a huge strike, lasting weeks. In train loads, military men arrived and workers from other parts of Spain to replace the local ones picketing for their earnings to be raised. I was just a kid hiding on a corner street, petrified, watching everything. I remember a woman running to the soldiers and with fire in her eyes begging, Sons, can't you see why our men are on strike? Just look at our life of misery and you won't blame us. Please, just look around one time. You'll understand then how we have to do something. The rest of the women followed in step until the soldiers indeed looked around and backed away, demoralized with bowed heads. They left a victorious town with better conditions and wages for the miners. That was a powerful and transformative moment in my life and in everyone's. The Basque bourgeoisie, the wealthy capitalists, the oligarchs saw that the working class impacts when united. I always say that the unions and women cannot give in to that small ruling class of entitled elite. And the church that wants to take God's place by objectifying her. I can't get over the fact that God's a she. <laughs> God is everything, everyone, you, them, and me. We're all born with the potential to be set free. I don't agree. I was born a bastard child because my father left my mother, my first siblings and me high and dry. That man had no God inside. He merely returned to a prior legitimate family he had kept secret on the side. You see, in the society I grew up, it was accepted for an affluent macho man to live a double life, even if the women and children were disgraced. Subjugated to their shame predicament, women turned their horse positioning themselves against each other. Man's powers to cause such painful isolation. You don't know what it's like to be betrayed by your own. My mother was forced to move to the poorest and most desolate village. 
where my older sisters and brother had to work as servants or cooks to help mother pay for one room apartment because her full-time job as a seamstress wasn't enough. Eventually, we moved to a larger place that my mother converted into a boarding house, but it wasn't a whorehouse like the Riff Raff has gossiped. Gossiped, she laid it on as first lady of Argentina during my trip to Europe while in Rome. People yell out to me, whore, you whore. Maybe I was a bit romantic when young or, or maybe I was simply searching for the long lost love of a father. I guess I was pretty cement. I was preyed upon, so I took full advantage, but always resolute to fulfill my pledge, to defend women's rights and elevate us to the dignified place in society where we belonged. We can't expect to be loved by all. The truth is we shouldn't even expect. I would have preferred a life of anonymous peace and quiet without causing a stir. To have just enough to raise my family and plant seeds in a pot of land. Time to enjoy a picnic, watch my children play, read them a book, sit around a table with a fresh loaf of bread and them. For that, I would have given up anything Life presents us with tests and challenges that we cannot reject. I take life as it comes, but give me that life I know rather than known. We've been at it for so long. I've already played a million times over each human song. I had no other choice but to sublimate my pain with helping others uplift their own name. My impoverished childhood was reflected in their eyes that looked so insane. What do you see reflected now? You are free. You don't have to consume anymore, nor keep your powder dry and sleep with one eye open. <laughs> That's, that was my advice to our soldiers and comrades. The enemy lurks everywhere and we must be prepared, I often told them. Doesn't it feel like good times now? Remembering back at our determination and courage. I try not to think of times past. <sighs> the tears rolling down an old man's face seeing him get evicted from his own place, being carried out in a chair he refused getting up from. I was enraged. You put that man back in his house this minute. And so they did. We brought him back into his room, fixed his bed and put him in it. Then I asked for a hammer to break the locks on every door and let the evicted victims back inside their homes. Nobody taught me how to respond or how, to, how I became. The circumstances did it. I was never prepared to become anything special or do anything of meaning. I didn't finish high school even. I figure acting would be a solution. I was smart, I had presence and an attitude of nothing to lose. Acting 
taught me compassion and gave me the insight into worlds unknown. I got to step into heroic women's shoes and transform with the character who opened my eyes to the benefits of action. Look, this is me. That was you. Wasn't I pretty? I listed all my physical endowments to the task and fine-tuned daily this acting instrument of mine. One is so naively determined when young and beautiful. <sighs> you won't believe it, but Juan and I did merit out of love. He both, we both wanted to be remembered for accomplishments regarding the biggest issues of the day both wanting to do the same in a different way. He, knowing what he wanted to do, and I, intuiting it. He, with his intelligence, and I, with my heart. He, sure of himself, and I, sure of his heart. You compromised, though. Not really. For example, when I visited Spain, Franco's wife and I disliked one another from the start. She was this frigid looking, tasteless, proud and hearty big too thin with her nose up high, never looking you in the eye, only interested in showing off. Franco assigned his beloved Carmen to be my unpleasant escort while noticing my antipathy towards his wife. Maybe he just wanted to show me who was boss. The next morning, over breakfast, she says, <clears throat> I have it all planned out for us today, dear. I took care that we first visit the most important historical places of Madrid. You need to see them near. These are legendary sites where my husband made history inflicting fear. <laughs> Then, if we have time to spare, I'm surprising you with a treat. Just some girly fun for us two girls to share. Thank you. But today's route must be changed to the places my husband promised Spain I'd entertain. The neighborhoods where working people live, hospitals where, where the sick are dying, and the schools of impoverished children striving. I have to acquiesce to my husband's wishes first. You understand? <laughs> Indeed, I can. I too am at my husband's highest command. Tomorrow will be a new day. But today we leave it as planned. Journalists are at hand and on schedule. No last minute alterations accepted, I regret to say, dear. They're not last minute. I fear Carmen my husband sent me here to serve two nations, yours and mine. Argentina's support for the hungry in Spain is not taken lightly on our side. My attentive presence here supports the food products we import. Very admirable indeed. But I'm here to guide you through your important visit. Meeting the defeated is a worthless task. They all wear on their faces a threatening mask. They participated in a war against my country, aided by Bolsheviks and Reds, not to mention the charlatan anarchists promising my husband's head. I knew it was because he was hated and was afraid of probably receiving an attack of tomatoes or an offensive rape. I couldn't resist and said to her, Where are you? You know very well 
that your husband is not empowered due to Spain's majority, but vote, but because of an imposition of triumphant force. You speak without knowledge, and, and worst, you are insulting my husband, Generalissimo Franco. Perhaps your Juan Perón made a mistake in sending his wife alone without knowledgeable political sympathizer. The ugly duckling responded with such a knowing voice. I continued as if nothing, unimpressed, and told her more stories of all the good things my husband and I had accomplished back home together. The stakes kept getting higher as I rushed to keep one step ahead, avoiding booby traps all along the way. There were moments I regretted having come at all to an intrigue-filled word turned conglomerate. The next day, Carmen managed to take me to Granada to the chapel of the kings where Queen Isabel and King Fernando's tombstones, tombstones lie. An enchanting place that once belonged to the Moors and where the unification began between America and Spain. Afterwards, a journalist asked what my thoughts were and I responded that I found it odd but insightful how Isabel's stone pillow where her head lay is lower than her husband's. And I added, if pillows were placed under our hearts, mine would be much lower than my husband, Juan Perón's, for I have the heavier one. And still you did what you did. I didn't do anything except play a part and give my husband the space for his unfaithful heart. Well, I didn't pay to sell out and sleep with the enemy. I contained the pain within me and continued politics as usual. How do you like that? Fine. <clears throat> except, isn't that when you began to get sick? Right. Now, do you hear the sounds? The creek, the birds, the wind, and that distant singing like a choir of angels? Here, put this around you for a little color to spice you up your black. Another color would betray my grieving. A little dust is wonders for one's mood. Let me help you with that. Thank you, Evita. But my life has been a perpetual state of mourning. So get away from all that causes aging. Change your look and stop the mopping. That's where we differ, you and I. Since my mother, my grandmother, Bia Pardo, left our side to black, I've been tied. Being congruent with my voice and image is my pride. Dolores, such fitting name. Dolores yeah. means suffering. Yes, it means pain. I'm not sure what's worse, pain or shame. The worst is seeing your children die, giving birth to triplets, and only one survive is indescribable. I say it over and over and still can't believe it. How did I endure? And then my son, my dearest Reuben, at 18 died in the battlefield at Stalingrad, fighting the Nazis. That boy gave his life for the survival of humanity, while mature nations cowered pretending to care. I need to let go 
I'm no longer there. Do you just like you told me to? I'm the only daughter my father refused. I always wished he had felt my power and seen my fame. Truth be told, I hope he's in hell. My life was defined by his neglectful act and... We wouldn't be who we are, thanks to all that. Never! You don't understand, you always had the support of a father who was a loving man. I wanted to be a teacher one day, but my mother swayed me away and, and warned me of aiming too high. How dare you, she said, with brothers who labor their life in the mines. I couldn't expect to be more than that. So I started sewing and moved on. We make do with what's at hand, otherwise we're just hanging on. From seamstress to political leader? Seamstress, maid, servant, and cook, and then to become what my mother became, and her mother, and her mother's mother, as well as all the other women, a housewife. Matrimony seems the heavenly end all, but really it's all that it's cracked, but really it's not all that it's cracked up to be when continuing the mother's daily downward footsteps to a bottomless pit of inhumanity with no other purpose than birthing, raising children, and being blamed or reproached when not ignored. Surely you don't believe that. I lived it. The common role of a housewife in a grim environment. That's because you never got dressed up colored your hair, did your nails, and went out to a dance. Oh, did I miss the romance? <sighs> what happened to my hair? I was a blonde. In this sphere, we're back to bare essentials. In Argentina, a blonde, white-skinned girl is unique and supreme. I, it wasn't easy getting my hair to have such sheen. Disregard the trifles of that other world. Do you think I look all right? Does it really matter in the greater scheme of things? I guess not. But vanity is part of my original sin. Vanity thrives like a vulture on rotting meat. You change your name. That's reinventing yourself. Was it to start a new life and passionaria you became? It wasn't premeditated. Julian founded the Communist Party of our area. I was shy but wanted to participate and motivate the discussion with union workers who gathered to strategize. Julian was always in prison for his active demonstrating so I needed to help. I began going to the local library and eating up books on socialism, philosophy, politics, history. One day, I got the impulse to write an article for a magazine dedicated to the miners and blue collar workers. Feeling I now had things to say and understood the situation, I had developed a vision that I wanted to share. It was Passion Week, so instead of signing my name, I thought it better and more appropriate if I signed off as Passionaria. <laughs> From then on, it became my pseudoname. But for a long time, nobody knew who I was. Writing those words of dissent, unidentified, yet stirring people, people's minds and hearts. When I started speaking in front of the masses, I lost myself in them. And then you left your husband? Julian. He was a solid, honest man of high moral ground. But after the initial fleeting ardor of oh, love, it all became cold, cruel, and completely unwound. 
While he maintained a low profile, I escalated the ranks, giving voice to a mute and exploited class of people in the midst of the worst social upheaval of our time. In Uskavi, Spain, Europe, and everywhere. My mother was a Basque like you. Hardworking woman, never give up. Her last name was Ibarguren. Mm. Means sunny terrace. I dedicated the Charitable Social Assistance Foundation to her. It's worth over 200 million and provides assistance to children, the elderly, and women. I also created a home for orphans and students so that they could always have a res residence available. If it wasn't for me, Juan would not have nationalized social services in our country. I fought tooth and nail. Don't forget to mention all that to the gods. Did you know that I sent a private plane to the United States full of winter clothes for the poor black children of that nation's capital? Was it an offer for show that fired back? How did you know? President Truman took it as such, or worse, as an assault to his people. It was a gesture of inclusiveness, close from my own local manufacturing foundation to his children's aid society. What a surplus that man was. He couldn't accept that a Spanish-speaking country was aiding the richest nation swarming on the Oscars with poor, homeless children. None of that really matters if you're stuck wishing ill will on others. What? I don't do that. What about the feelings of resentment you maintain towards your father? <sighs> it's not easy. I know. The more I realize, the more helpless I become. I too was righteous, high-minded, and unforgiving, just like everyone. Thinking I was special? What fraudulent ego of mine. How could I not have at least tried to stop Stalin from doing the terrible things he did? Which reminds me, whatever happened to the Spanish god you gave them for safekeeping? I don't know, and I don't care. We all won when Hitler lost. And truthfully, it was all thanks to the Russians. But now they can return it. They can keep the gold if they want, Evita. That's not my point. We pick sides and then have double standards. Stalin would explain to me how Russia was 50 to 100 years behind the advanced countries and needed to cover that distance in 10 years or less. He said, either they catch up to the West or surely they'll be crushed by them. I praised his competitiveness and understood his urgency. His intent to establish a socialist system of government was fine. But millions of people were killed in the process. As I turned a blind eye. You are much too hard on yourself. Life is not that simple. All we have to do is be conscious. Russia seems so far away and evil. Based on what? Juan told me all about them. How they are unbelievers. Again, that is religion talking. Angry clerics because their privileged status was removed. And most were persecuted due to a tight association between a corrupted regime and the church. I'm not saying it was right to do. But why must they continue a tarnished reputation while Germany, who did worse, is now seen as good. The world believes in God. Well, they do not. God is a private matter. The bottom line should be, he who draws the sword will die by it. 
Before Russia, many nations disappeared by the hands of others. My own America shed its blood into the sea. I resent life for all of the suffering and having to pretend, getting along as if nothing. I need to let go and accept Grace's offering, I know. Imagine a world, juicy pink, <laughs> quiet and fruitful. <laughs> I first have to find it within myself. What would you do? What would you do if you had to return and the world was worse? I do what I could all over again. But this time remembering that the time is short spent, that the heart knows, and freedom waits ahead with the most fragrant rose. I think I might have beat more off more than what I could do. And that maybe I was over my head and the cancer saved me instead. I was losing myself in redundant luxury, power, responsibility, and the game became all about me while holding on to an underclass. When Juan broke my heart and our vows were shattered, I lost all control. It is better to kill 100 innocents than to let one guilty person go. How do you mean? Because one bad apple spoils the barrel? Because it only takes one Hitler to obliterate mankind? Because there is so much good to live for and die for and fight for? We can't allow crime. Seeing the faces arrive from all corners of the world ready to defend Spanish soil was breathtakingly joyous. It was unheard of and indescribable. You had to be there to believe. People coming on their own free will, leaving their families and homes Men and women, you know? A black man named Oliver Law led a white battalion for the first time ever. The international brigades in Spain fighting fascism. Oh, how proud I felt. And like a mother, I held each one to my breast. The farewell speech you gave reverberated throughout the world. That's when I was an actress playing historic heroines on the radio, and I remember listening to you intently, absorbing like a sponge all the power of your message and mastery of your delivery. Hmm. I remember thinking, this heroic woman is alive. <laughs> I'm witnessing history. What for, Tutti? It was November 1st, 1938. That's right. I was preparing for a radio performance of Carlota de Mexico. The war in Spain had ended. Everyone stopped to listen to your words. It is very difficult to say just a few words of farewell to you, heroes of the International Brigades, soldiers with the highest ideals of human redemption. We grieve for those who must stay here forever under the Spanish soil, though feel eternally grateful in the very depths of our hearts. From all cultures and races, you came to us like brothers in the scariest days of the war, when Spain's freedom was being threatened. You, gallant comrades of the international brigades, helped save our country with your fighting enthusiasm, your heroism, and your spirit of sacrifice. 
For the first time in history, the spectacle is breathtakingly formed by people from all parts of the world struggling to help save a threatened country's freedom and independence. Communists, socialists, anarchists, republicans, men of different colors, differing ideologies and religions, yet all profoundly loving liberty and justice. You came offering yourselves unconditionally to us. You gave us everything, your youth, your maturity, your science, your experience, your blood, your lives, your hopes and aspirations, and asked for nothing in return but the honor of dying with us. Mothers, women, when the years pass and the wounds of war have been acknowledged, when the memory of those sad, bloody days has dissipated and the rancors have died out and pride in a free country is felt equally again by all Spaniards, speak to your children and tell them of these men of the international brigades. Tell them how, coming over seas and mountains, these men crossed frontiers bristling with bayonets and raving dogs thirsting to tear off their flesh. These men reached our country as crusaders for freedom, willing to fight and die for our Spain's liberty against fascism, saying we are here because your fight, your cause, Spain's cause is our cause and the cause of all civilized, progressive mankind. Comrades, you can go proudly you are history, you are legend, you are heroic example of democracy solidarity. We shall not forget you. And when the olive tree of peace is in flower, entwined with the victory laurels of all the Republic of Spain, return. Come back to our side, for here you will find a homeland. And if you're without country or friends, no that you have the affection and gratitude of the Spanish people who today and always will shout with enthusiasm, long live the heroes of the international brigades. <laughs> you impact me now as you did then. It must have been awful for you to have to leave Spain. First to France and then to Russia. Exiled for 35 years. Yes, it was hard to leave behind so much. And then, my Francisco was taken prisoner by the Nazis. I was going insane. But luckily, Stalin was able to negotiate with Hitler his freedom. Can you imagine how far I went for my Romeo? We got to live a few years together happy. Until my Reuben was killed. Then Francisco went off to France to work for our party. He had to get away, and I, I, I gave him no blame. But sometime later, when he told me that he had secretly gotten married and was a father, I hunted him down to the end with all my vengeance and zero shame. It was all the pain accumulated. I'm sure, and then having to leave over there. Russia uh, was great to me and to thousands of exiled Spanish children who grew up as proud communists. I became cultured there. I went to the opera, theater, ballet, artists from all over, including America. They came to perform. 
I met the magnificent Paul Robeson there. When I told him about Oliver Law, he became so enamored with that character that he promised to make a film to portray him. I never found out if he pulled it off. Hollywood was blacklisting him. You're right. I, I was wrong in securing the freedom and safety of war criminals. I knew, but I, I couldn't do anything about it. I ignore it. Feeling sorry for myself, like an, an eventful book sitting on a shelf. I accepted jewelry that was property of the Jewish people whose life and belongings had been taken from them. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't ask questions. I didn't want to know. Out of greed and selfishness, Nazis paid me for their lives with possessions of their victims. recognized his wife's earrings that she wore when he last saw her being taken away. Will I be forgiven? Depends on you. Remember that one and one always make two. The laws of nature are simple. What you give shines through no matter what others do. Here, for you. <laughs> no, no, no. Why? I don't deserve them. <sighs> oh, how beautiful they are. <laughs> You're still young. What do you say you, bo you go back for another chance? Huh? And dance? <laughs> yes. To the beat of your own drum? Yes, I want to dance. But you won't come. You. Who is Evita? I'm Evita. I'm your driver to get you to dance the dance ball. Go on, Evita. Come with me. The drive, sweetheart, is just for you. I'll never forget. Have the courage to love all the time with an open heart. Oh, come on, come on. You can't be late. Your fate at half past eight, or else you'll have to wait another hundred stars to be gone. Goodbye, kindred spirit. Oh, oh. Oh, Happy oh. journeys to you. Adios, Francisco. Really? I did well? Some things I didn't do, but I promise to. I'll get them right next time. I just want to be next to you. Follow the lights, and you will see what you, what, where to go. On the way, there is a bucket with warm water, soap, and 
an oil sponge wash in my feet. <laughs> Me? I can also sew and cook and clean. Oh, yes. I see your glow. Uh, come like ash and flower, my shining light of day. You are okay. The end. We cut? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. We didn't bow. We should have bowed. Ay, mi joyita, ya no lo hemos hecho, por Dios. I know. Hemos parido. Madre mía. Hemos parido, Bego. Carmen, I'm so proud of you. Oh, por favor. It's a break, right? We're done. Oh, you're done? Okay. We have a massive delivery coming right now. Oh, yeah? Right now? Perfect timing? Yeah, there's a coming in. Perfect timing? No. Oh, my God. Yeah, I don't know. I hope it didn't get cut off.